Hi everybody and welcome back to my Revive channel. It has been a while and I've got to say I was a little bit uh, apprehensive of what I was going to do today but I have decided to show you how I create my actual process. I very rarely start and finish a page in the one sitting. I really don't like facing the white page and this is how I deal with that. I have a session where I just throw paint around. Um, I'm sorry if this isn't what you're used to. Um, it's not a start to finish project, but I just thought I'd loosen up for my first video back. So let's get started. So let's start with the substrates, the pages that you actually work on. I work in several journal journals at the same time. I don't have really a preference at whatever my mood takes me. So I've got Dina Wakely journals, I have Loose Leap uh, journals, um, so I thought I'd show you some here. Um, all my pages will be pre-gessoed here uh, so that I have a little bit of working time with my paint, but I do also work with no gesso pages as well. Uh, you need some paint, mark making tools and a large paintbrush, as large, large as you can handle basically. And this is how I roll. Um, this is how I start. I just switch off. I literally throw paint around. I use two palettes. A cool palette, which is the blues and the greens, and the warm palette, which is your pinks, purples, reds, oranges. Um, I don't work on these colour palettes together on the one page. That's a recipe for disaster and mud. Um, but the greens and the blues really mix well together. And this is your first layer. So really don't think. A toothbrush is your best friend. It gives great marks and splatters. Water is also a tool. You can create a really nice flowy effect by using that on your page before you add the paint and as you add the paint. You can add some great drippage um, and just, just play. Don't even think about the end product. And do the same with your warm palette. Uh, this is in my Dina Wakely journal. And you just do the same thing. After you've had a play I usually have a little bit of uh, paint left over and I hate to waste it. So this is when I gather my um, scrap pieces of paper, printer's paper, um, clean up paper, whatever you can find. Uh, I like to use that for uh, collage paper and also some of your uh, backgrounds that you've done prior. You can add some more colours to it. And all I do is clean off my palette onto these random pieces of paper. Uh, just go for it so that you don't feel like you're wasting your paint. And once these are dry, I can use it in my art as a collage paper. You never have enough collage paper and I often have too much collage paper. What I'm using here is uh, greaseproof paper, as cheap as you can find. I think mine, this is sort of no name, generic, greaseproof paper. I like to use it on my journals because once you glue it down with gel medium it goes quite transparent. However this piece actually ended up being quite muddled with a whole heap of gold going on so I don't think that'll be very transparent but I'll add to it later, add some more marks later in the same fashion. At least I didn't waste paint right? And now let's get back to those um, backgrounds that we've already made earlier. They're a little bit muddy, they're a little bit like rejects really, 
um, and all I do is just get rid of every piece of paint on that palette add some water to create some drips and it just makes it a little bit more interesting on these other backgrounds that I had I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, these are what I tried the Dina Wakeley gloss sprays on uh, earlier and I feel like I could probably resolve a little bit more of um, these backgrounds so that they'll be more usable later. So I'm going to create another layer. I'm taking baby wipes and drying them off because they were really wet. They, they, they were at the bottom of the um, the container you'd want your baby wipe quite not dry but if you squeeze it and it drips it's way too wet so I wiped it off on a towel um, and dried it out a little bit and then what I do is add some paint just with you can use your finger I've used a catalyst tool here and also you could use like a credit credit card it doesn't matter how you get the paint on just add a fairly thin layer and then take a stencil that's quite a wide opening um, don't get one that's too intricate because uh, this will not treat the stencil terribly well I like the scrap effect stencils because they're quite hardy and these particular ones are, they've got quite an open design and this technique works really well with that so you just add the paint onto the page and wipe it through the stencil with the baby wipe. Keep turning your baby wipe so that you don't add more colour onto it as you wipe off. And it takes that paint away and gives you a negative image of the actual mm -hmm. stencil. I find this as a second layer or third layer works, works really well to combine all your layers together and make it a cohesive composition. And I do this a lot. Um, but remember, try and leave some white space to create some balance. Now I've changed tack, I've changed colours. Don't go too dark with all of this because it, it then limits you with your focal point. Um, I am using quite dark here, but anyway, and I just have to say this is one of my favourite stencils at the moment. It's from Scrap FX and it is divine. This works so lovely with it, as you can see. And if there's any paint left on the stencil, stamp it around, it just adds to the design. Yes, I have no idea which way is up on any of these pages. I make up that as I go along and once I feel that um, I want to work on it and finish the page that's when I'll decide which way's up. And this is another stencil from Scrap FX that I really like at the moment but you can use any stencil from any brand as long as it's quite open and quite sturdy. You don't want to wreck your stencil doing this. And now I'm adding a few flecks uh, with my trusty toothbrush and that is it I think no nope, I still have paint left over and now I'm making an absolute mm, botheration of a page with those two and these are what the dried pages look like uh, there's some that I like some that I don't like so much some that need a lot more work and some that are ready to play with straight away and add a focal point. And that's how I play. I really like this one. That is going to be a keeper. That one needs a lot more work. And then I have all these collage papers. Crinkly goodness, I call them. I love the texture of them once they've dried. And I'll use them in my creations later on. Okay, and that's about it for me for this first video back. I hope you enjoyed it. I promise I'll be back to show you what I do with all these backgrounds that we've made here. These two are mud. This one I love and it's ready to go. And these two I will do in the next video uh, and finish them off. 
they really just need a focal image and a couple of words and they're done. So I'll do them in my next video. Thanks for watching.